Hello, UGCS pilots. My name is Dimitri. Today's webinar is going to be on search and rescue operations. We gathered a lot of feedback from search and rescue teams we're working with. We're not going to disclose their names, but decided to share this experience with you. If you have an experience in search and rescue and willing to share it with us, or have any ideas how UGCS can be helpful in such operations, please contact us at support at ugcs.com. The following webinar is an example of search and rescue missions using Mavic 2 Enterprise and M200 M210. Mavic drones are widely used and M210 is a professional drone capable of flying in rainy weather. But search and rescue missions are not limited to these drones only. Search and rescue missions come in two types. Operative search is conducted within a few hours or one to two days with comfortable weather from the time person has been missing. During the operative search, you can attract missing person attention with speakers and light beacon. People are usually trying to stay near roads or somewhat habitated and familiar areas. There is also a difficult difficulty you might face. Person might constantly move. When conducting any type of search, Overlap parameters can be left default or according to the search and rescue procedure in your company or organization. Side overlap allows to take photos from different points of view, increasing the chances of finding a missing person. Now, basic experience. Forest search. It really depends on a lot of factors, such as whether it's an open woodland, what type of cloth, where is the last person, etc. If we're talking deep woods, it's almost impossible to see something through the tree crowns as the flights are conducted at a high altitude. It's also obviously hard to find someone wearing camouflage. But the main tools for the forest search are photogrammetry tool, area scan, expanding square, in case the last location of the missing person was known. Camera should always be set in the deer. Tilt 90 degrees, as you can see here. Mountain search. Also has a lot of nuances, such as whether it's snowing and missing person can be covered with snow or collapsed rocks. In addition, the search area in mountains can be below the takeoff point. DJI has restrictions that you won't be able to fly lower than 200 meters from takeoff point and higher than 500 meters by default. Search tools used are photogrammetry tool, area scan, expanding square. In most cases, during the search, drone's camera should face uh, the slope or camera should face the side. During the first search, camera should be set in the deer, as you remember. During the mountain search, camera should be set at the angle. The angle should be set according to the situation. Now, shores and riverside search. Here is an example of a riverside search. Conduct, it's conducted with corridor mapping with three or four flight passes to cover the shore. Camera should face the shore perpendicular to the flight path. Additionally, steep shores should be checked for fresh marks such as broken bushes or ripped grass or cloth parts Drones that can control yaw with the payload must be, must be sent on a mission flying sideways. Depending on the flight path, control the camera tilt. In most cases, for sure search, the further from the shore, the more the tilt angle should be. Here you can see that our camera is tilted 45 degrees as we're not flying right above the shore. And the drone itself has a yaw angle of 90 degrees. High grass search, conducted in two stages. If possible, use photogrammetry to create elevations 3D map for low altitude flight. So the drone won't crash into a tree or hell. Actual low altitude search, low speed search to avoid motion blur with additional waypoint options. Creeping line, here we go, is used when searching long areas with 
steep or in any way restricted sides. A person will not be able to reach without special equipment. Night search can be conducted using beacon or speaker, campfire, flashlight, or light of a lighter can be seen from 100 and 150 meters above easily. Infrared cameras has a very limited usage. You look for campfire, for instance. Car hit signature can also be seen as long as 20, 30 minutes and more after it left the place. Uh, why it's pretty much useless. In case of cold weather, missing person is trying to cover himself. So no body heat will expose the environment. Use the beacon to attract missing person attention and a speaker for direction and instructions, such as direct to use flashlight or lighter and do not move from the position. You'll see a white line on the photos where the flashlight or lighter was lit. Beacon and speaker is the new feature of UGCS. Recommendations and restrictions. Or the photo will not work in case if looking over water or deep forest without contrasting objects, such as road or footpath. We are unaware of algorithm capable of creating or the photo out of environment that has congenetic structure. Trenches. Uh, you should fly, fly in trenches only in manual mode because of too few GPS satellites will not allow drone positioning. Flights are usually performed with additional waypoints with turn type set to stop and turn. Continue road function is uh, useful to ease the search, especially when flying multiple drones at once. There should be individual missions for each drone. Some search and rescue companies have requirements that camera always facing north. And such tool as area scan as well as photogrammetry tool. Uh, well, for the photogrammetry tool, you can only set the ground resolution. And for area scan, you can set a needed altitude. That was one type of search. The other one is post-mortem search. It's performed pretty much like an operative search with a few nuances. What can ease the search is that person is apparently not moving, but you cannot attract the person's attention. Body might get relocated to unexpected places by wild animals or river stream. It can be covered with snow or fallen leaves. It's conducted when all the reasonable time to survive has expired. Post-mortem uh, search is conducted during daytime only and additional waypoints check mark activated. As I said, it's pretty much performed as an operative search. So forest, mountain search, shores and river search, and high grass search is conducted the same way. UGCS is capable, uh, capable of exporting flight log, so it can be uploaded to Google Earth or other third-party software. So the search commander can control the search areas. Pro and enterprise versions are both capable of flying up to 10 drones at the same time. Additionally, enterprise version is also capable to stream live video to command center or other third-party software and services. Concluding this webinar, please let us know of your experience of search and rescue operations with UGCS. If there is something you would like to add or change, or if you want to share your experience with others, please let us know by dropping a letter to support at UGCS.com and we'll arrange the next webinar together. This webinar will be posted on our YouTube channel along with your questions and answers. Now let me check if there is some questions and I'll try to answer them. Hold on a minute. Uh, I, my name is Alexey Mara, I'm the director at uh, Space Engineering. Uh, guys, tell me, can you hear me well? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, good. So I, I want to answer a few questions. Okay, go ahead. And the question from Tom. Are there any listening acoustic sensors used by your drones like a microphone, a visa? Okay, we are... We... Uh, 
we have not have not tested any integration with acoustic sensors. The idea is quite clear that technically we can try to catch with directional microphone uh, the presence of a person. Uh, we didn't make such tests. We are very open to those who possess such equipment and we can uh, with the software side. So, but, but the answer is uh, no, we do not provide such sensors, uh, but we can help with uh, flight planning for such mission. Uh, I hope that answers the question. Uh, there was another question from anonymous attendee. Uh, what about SDK, SDK to parrot drone? Um, with the uh, parrot, there is uh, the following story. Um, oh, with, uh, <clears throat> we do not have a special mobile application for parrot. And actually, we do not have any specific plans for doing that. Uh, we were trying, we were trying to connect the remote controller to our desktop software, but it seems like the remote controller cannot work like a data link, long range data link, uh, like a pass through data link. So for now, we do not have a good support for uh, uh, Parrot. So if somewhat, um, someone from Parrot, guys, get in touch with us. We're very open to add support to your drone, <laughs> but we need your assistance. Uh, then, uh, what does, a uh, question from Fernando, uh, what does action mean when losing RC do not modify on the parameter screen? Um, can't say for sure what that means. Uh, I just want to say that actions are performed, uh, on the drone itself. So even uh, and actions are part of the missions, mission uploaded to the drone. So, uh, so if uh, drone loses connection with the ground station, then uh, autopilot performs this mission. Uh, of course, if uh, the failsafe condition uh, for the drone uh, configured properly because uh, <clears throat> many drones differently. So some they may return home or they, they may continue mission when uh, connection to the ground station is lost. So if drone is configured to continue the mission, then the actions will be performed. Uh, Fernando, please let me know in Q and A if that's not the answer to your question or. Uh, let me know if it is the answer. Uh, uh, from Damien. Sorry if I misunderstood something, but can we do real-time mission? Uh, of course, that depends on what you mean by real-time, but yes. So you can uh, control the drone in real-time. You can get video feed in real-time. And you can send comments to the drone in real time. And also what is more important, you can work in a team. So for example, you can have a pilot in the field. And for example, if you have someone, a visual observer who monitors the video feed in headquarters or in the car, you can broadcast the telemetry from the drone and the video feed from the drone to remote location and also use like the power of a team for the search and rescue operation. And there's a question from, uh, how about search over C? Uh, I think that Boris, uh, that Dmitry uh, provided some basic information uh, uh, about searching over the water. Uh, actually, uh, Maybe after Q and A, Dmitry can just repeat it. Just most important topics uh, about such type of search. 
So, uh, uh, about the support for Arduino Pilot uh, with version three point eight. Uh, yeah, uh, I have not seen. Thank you for noting that. Uh, anyway, uh, the questions that we get in Q&A section will be lately. Uh, if you will not get, if you will not get response right now, then we will get back to you after the webinar with <coughs> answers. So. I will definitely figure out uh, what happens with our file three uh, Question from uh, when UGCS will be available in Polish? Yeah, actually, the matter is already answered, but I, I, I will just 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 um, uh, read it loudly. So. Uh, Basically, if you need translation to your language, of course, we cannot support oral languages uh, because uh, there are many technical terms which is sometimes very hard uh, to translate properly if you are not a native speaker. So, but we are very open to local partners who can make this translation. And if you think that you need this uh, translation to your language, so we can, uh, so you can. Uh, get in touch with us and uh, we can provide you with uh, English translation. English, English text, and you can translate it into your native language. So that is, that is possible to do. 